So Scott Kelly, just under two weeks away from returning from his historic year-long stay on board the International Space Station. And a lot of people are going to be down there on the ground to help out once he comes home. And I'm joined now by one of those, Dr. Stephen Gilmore, who's the lead flight surgeon uh, and has been for Scott for his entire mission. So Dr. Gilmore, first off, thanks so much for joining me today. It's always great to meet the people kind of behind the scenes making this all happen. And if I can, I want to jump right into it. So the landing in Kazakhstan's are really dynamic, they're really interesting interesting. Tell me a little bit about what that process is like on your end as a flight surgeon. Well, thank you very much, and it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I, I would describe it as the definition of a whirlwind tour. Mm -hmm. um, we um, will be leaving about seven days before landing to go over to Moscow, and we'll meet with some of the support team there and coordinate with our Russian um, colleagues who um, provide all the assets for landing mm -hmm. and about three days before landing we travel with them to Kazakhstan and um, get in the posture for deployment um, and uh, on the day of the landing we split up into two teams there's a team that goes and supports um, a possible landing at a ballistic site and then there's a larger team uh, that goes to the primary landing site and um, I'll be in the team at the primary landing site and um, on the day of the landing, we deploy into groups on uh, the helicopters that are provided and um, fly out to the landing site and are there to receive the crew. Okay, and so as a flight surgeon, so there's a lot of folks, there's the search and recovery folks, there's a lot of people from you know, mm -hmm. the Russian forces, the NASA team. As a flight surgeon, what is your role once you're down on the ground and we have you know, Scott out of the capsule? So we, we do several things, but our, our main responsibility there is to um, uh, be looking out for the health and well-being of the crew member. Uh, and so immediately after landing, um, we're there with the team, and um, we are typically there for the extraction of the crew members from the uh, vehicle. Okay. And from that point forward, we're monitoring um, them, checking out their vital signs. Um, they typically have a brief... Um, period in chairs out in front of the capsule and they do a little bit of um, uh, question and answer stuff mm -hmm. with uh, some of the folks that are there. And then after that, um, they set up a, a medical tent uh, okay. and we take the crew members into there. Um, again, we're um, just making sure they're doing well, um, get them changed out of their spacesuits. Um, and in that tent also, we would we plan to perform some uh, medical and science testing. Um, okay. Um, after after that's done, we uh, everyone gets back on the helicopters and returns mm -hmm. to um, the airport in Karaganda for return to, uh, in our case, we'll be coming back directly to the States and the Russian crew members go back to Moscow. Okay. Now, so Scott Kelly has been in space for almost 12 months now. Are you going to be doing anything special for his return as opposed to what you normally do for a, say, six-month crew member? So in, in general, it's a similar template. Okay. Um, I think I, I'm kind of, we'll compare it to his last stay on orbit, which was, um, which I also had the fortune, good fortune to work with um, him on that. Um, but so the, the, the science and the, and the research questions um, are really um, paramount on this one year mission. And in contrast to the last, last one, um, he'll be doing some uh, blood collection like not immediately before he gets on the the mm -hmm. vehicle to come home, but within a few hours of that. Okay. Um, so we'll be we'll be getting um, a lot of data on the crew member. It's it's a little bit uh, difficult to describe, but um, and when you're looking at a crew member, um, basically what there's there's a there's a time pressure because mm -hmm. although you can't see it in most cases directly, you what we're trying to capture is a snapshot of the crew's health, their capability and functioning, and that is a constantly changing um, uh, picture, mm -hmm. um, even though it's tough to view just yeah. from a person looking at oh, them. Yeah. But so we do that in a variety of ways, whether it's blood draws or sample collections or um, some of the um, functional testing uh, that we do. Th that's what mm -hmm. the main goal is. So I wanted to get into that real quick. So you guys are going to be doing something with functional testing, mm -hmm. you know, really soon after. And I think we had uh, talked to Julie Robinson a little bit about that. Can you expand upon that? Like, what are some of the, the tasks that Scott is going to be uh, asked to do, you know, that and why are we doing these kind of tests? That's a great question. Um, 
there's a there's a test that we ideally perform at the landing site in mm -hmm. the tent and uh, it's called the functional field test and the goal of this test is basically to um, um, obtain an assessment of what crews can perform. Yeah. Um, so, and and the analogs for this are we want to know um, quantitatively or with some numbers what kind of can can they jump up and down? Can they open hatches? Mm -hmm. Could they do a spacewalk? Uh, or in the case that we're going to somewhere like Mars, can we can they go out right away and do tri um, um, spacewalks on the surface of the of that yeah. planet? And so. Um, what we do in the in the tent is, um, as as I mentioned, we'll we'll do a quick medical check on the crew member. Um, we'll get them out of their spacesuits, and then um, they're instrumented with some really interesting uh, technology. Um, a lot of motion sensors um, okay. on all their um, like on their arms and legs and on their chest, um, and that allows us to do um, with videography. We can um, sort of measure mm -hmm. their ability to to move and see how that's different relative to when they left. Uh, the other things that we're also monitoring closely are um, their heart rate response mm -hmm. um, as we're having them do activities. And it's it's fairly straightforward activities. It's getting up quickly, it's changing positions, it's a, a mini obstacle yeah. course to see how they how their bodies tolerate navigating those Something things. Something maybe not so hard when you've been down here the whole time, but when you've been coming back from microgravity, it can be a little bit difficult. Absolutely. Um, and and again, this is part of that obtaining snapshots of the crew member's ability. Mm -hmm. We know we've, we've done it multiple times before the flight in this case, and um, we'll do it after the flight. And it, it's, to me, it's a real, um, uh, perhaps you'll have at one point an opportunity to maybe show uh, the audience what the test mm -hmm. is, but it's a real practical yeah. test, and yeah. um, I think it gets real valuable information. Okay, and I mean, just one final thing. So once he's back in the country, you know, the rehab begins. What's what's kind of the rehab process look for a crew member? And is there anything? Is there going to be anything different about his again as opposed to what we normally do for folks? So the the typical process is uh, we'll take a pretty much a 20-hour flight back to Houston mm -hmm. um, after, after landing, and uh, we have this period where we call it the the reconditioning period, and. Um, typically for a six-month mission it lasts about 45 days and okay. there's daily um, workouts and exercises to make sure that we return the crew member back to the same kind of functioning that they had before um, before the mission started and so f with respect to the one-year mission um, Usually, what we see is crew member crew members, as I as I described before, they're in a state of change, mm -hmm. and um, their abilities are improving all the time from from landing point forward. Um, I anticipate that um, even though he's been in year in space for a year, that we'll still probably need that full 45 days. Okay. Um, and we do have the latitude in the case that a little bit more time is required for uh, the rehab process. Um, we, we can extend that if necessary. Um, but I anticipate that it'll look uh, in many ways similar to the six-month experiences that, mo that most of the station astronauts have. All right. Well, again, Dr. Stephen Gilmore, the lead flight surgeon for Scott Kelly's one-year mission, getting ready to come home in just under two weeks. Uh, thanks so much for joining me on console. Good luck over there in Kazakhstan. Pack a jacket. I know it's going to be cold, <laughs> uh, but best of luck. Thank you very much. I certainly will.